Hello and let's talk about the state of the economy. Over the past few months, we saw India's economy tanking during the lockdown. Unemployment soared to 27%, industrial production declined, as did consumption. Every major indicator was in the red except for occasionally the stock market, which perhaps showed that it was not really a good indicator of the economy's health. The month of June saw a bit of a revival though, and a host of experts, especially of the pro-government variety, were quick to proclaim that the tide had turned. However, July does not seem to confirm that this is optimistic estimate. We talked to journalists on India Chakravarti on various indicators of the economy's health and what options the government has and what it should be doing. Thank you, Anindya, for joining us. So, uh, another Independence Day coming up and a lot of reflection on the state of the country, the state of the economy, etc., etc. So, we have been talking about the economy over the past few months. There's, there was obviously a very steep fall initially, some signs of a recovery, but it looks like, again, the situation has is but does not look so good. So we'll talk a bit about this. Right. So in June, it looked like that the recovery is taking place. And by July, we should be back to, you know, pre-COVID-19 lockdown situation. But that doesn't look like it's happening because the recovery that we saw in June seems to be uh, leading on to some sort of a slump in July. And uh, most indicators, what are called high-frequency indicators, which are released every... Uh, a month or every two months or even every week, those kind of indicators tell us that the July recovery has slowed down quite sharply. Absolutely. So could you give us an outline of what are the key indicators that show that this is happening? So first of all, let's look at GST. Uh, now, you know, the traditional run rate for GST last year was about, uh, what the government has wanted is about 1 lakh crore every month, right? Uh, we know that that has not been achieved in many months because the slowdown is actually not caused by coronavirus. It's basically caused because of the general mishandling of the economy and economic policies followed by uh, this government and previous governments as well. So uh, GST collections dropped sharply. We know in April, in May, they recovered a bit. In June, it had gone up to close to about 91,000 crore, pretty close to that 1 lakh mark, right? In July, it has dropped again to about 87.4 thousand crores. So, uh, again, we're seeing a drop in GST, not just uh, year on year. Compared to last July, we're down more than 14%. But even compared to June, we're down 3.5%. So, the June recovery is clear, was some sort of a pent-up demand. Things right. were completely shut in April and most of May. So, June people went out and bought. So GST is a very clear sign, first of all. Then let's look at some other data, for instance, uh, something like freight carriage. How much is the railways carrying on a daily basis? And uh, if we look at June, average daily uh, carriage, uh, the freight being carried was about 3.12 million tons. That has dropped to 3.07 million tons in July. Now you could say that in monsoon, certain kinds of freight does go down. That's true. But uh, given that the lockdown was opening up in most places, it was ending in most places, that freight rate should have gone up because the average is still not to the levels where it right. is uh, even in June. So that's why. Now look at uh, consumption of petrol and diesel. Uh, now petrol and diesel, uh, we saw that it had all recovered quite significantly. Of course, it was still slow because uh, obviously... Uh, uh, there was a general slowdown. In June, we saw petrol, diesel, overall fuel consumption go to about 16.25 million tons. Now, in July, that has dropped again. It's gone to about 15.67 million tons. So we're seeing even that consumption drop by nearly 4%. So this tells you that the economy is again contracting. Uh, finally, let's take something which uh, most uh, you know brokerages or uh, economists attached to institutions look at something called the PMI. Now, the PMI uh, is uh, known as the Purchasing Managers Index. It tells you, and it's divided into services and manufacturing. I'm just looking at manufacturing. It tells you that uh, what is the purchasing manager, the per person who uh, procures things, sells, and stuff like that, what is their anticipation, right? Mm -hmm. And what are they doing right now? So, the PMI, when the index is above 50, the assumption is that the economy is expanding. And when the PMI goes below 50, right. assumption is that it is contracting. Uh, we know that in April, I think the PMI went to somewhere around 29 or something like that. And that is probably the lowest since 
this PMI has been recorded uh, and that is expected. Uh, lockdown is going to do that. May it recovered a bit and by June it had gone back to about 47.2, which is close to 50, right? So uh, one would have imagined and many commentators thought that, okay, June, there's been such a recovery by July, they should cross 50 again. So we'll again go into an expansion mode. Right. Now remember that, uh, Prashant, that growth is a necessary part of any economy uh, which is already developing and is largely poor and also where population goes up. Even if you have to match the 1% annual population growth, then just to match per capita uh, supply of uh, goods that each person on an average should get the same amount of goods that they got last year, growth has to be 1%, right? So there has to be, in a country like ours, uh, PMI should be above 50, uh, always, just to keep things at uh, where they were last year. But in July, the PMI actually dropped. It dropped to 46. So it tells you that there is a sense, that there is a sense across the board that the economy has again started contracting in July. And the final indicator I'll take is something from the RBI, the RBI's surveys, the household surveys it does. And this is not really a sign of contraction, but a sign of what people expect is going to happen. And that has an impact on how they're going to spend, right. what they're going to do, right? Yeah. And uh, one of those is uh, the sense of net sense of unemployment. Now, uh, unemployment levels have actually gone down quite sharply, as uh, CMI's weekly data tells us. It's almost come back to where it was, unemployment, not employment level. These are two different things. But unemployment has come back to more or less the March level. Employment is still lower. We think, I, I think about two odd crore people are still out of work. Those are looking for work. Uh, but if you look at what households assume is going to happen, the RBI survey shows that it's a negative 69%. 69% of uh, households in the survey responded and thought that unemployment is going to go up. So this gives you a sense right. of uncertainty. We know that Mutual fund uh, have seen consecutive months of redemptions. Again, uh, there's been a net outflow of mutual funds. That means that people are not certain what's going to happen. They're consuming what PF withdrawals have gone up sharply. So right. this tells you that there is a sense overall that things are going to contract. And when that happens, then demand contracts. And it's almost a vicious cycle. Absolutely. So in this context, has the government acknowledged any of this uh, at all or has there been any sign from the government that there is some attempt at thinking through this process at giving some direction to this process in the first place? Prashant, I think not only has the government not acknowledged it, the only backhanded acknowledgement you've got is from Rajnath Singh who says that if COVID-19 had not happened, India would have become the third largest economy in the world in another five to six years or some, some time frame that is given. So... In a sense, that's a backhanded acknowledgement that things are not all right in the economy. The government still claims and the news media, mainstream media still continues to project that it has given 20 lakh, 21 lakh crores of uh, stimulus. We know that the actual amount is probably 10% of that or even less. Now, uh, what we're seeing is, uh, yesterday we know that the Prime Minister came out with this, uh, uh, you know, tax Absolutely. transparency. Uh, thing. Now, it's all very well to be transparent about taxes, but people have to earn to be able to pay taxes. This is, was the time if you go by conventional norms, because this government is not going to think outside conventional norms. They should have deducted taxes. They should have given a media tax break to the middle class, which is already facing a contraction in income. They should have reduced the prices by reducing taxes on fuel, reduced GST, of course, the question there would be, how will the government uh, you know, spend if it's going to reduce taxes? Well, increase the fiscal deficit. Uh, in normal circumstances, I would say that tax rates for the higher income groups need to go up. But frankly, this is not a normal circumstance because even higher income groups are not spending. And when they don't spend, then a chunk of the economy is not going to see any demand. And unfortunately, over a 20, 30 period, year period, if this is what you made out of the economy, you can't suddenly switch off the uh, switch it off. So you're stuck with it in a certain sense, right? So uh, transparency, and if you look at look at it closer, then you'll see actually this transparency is all about uh, 
uh, not being sent a notice by a babu who knows you right however uh, there is a large number of things which have been added now so if you spend more than 20000 i think in a restaurant or a hotel uh, it will automatically go into your returns if you spend more than a lakh on school fees or college fees it will automatically go into your returns the threshold has been lowered and for each of them there'll be a notice automatically served to you i'm assuming because you will be told and you'll have to show that you've either done that spending or not done it or either you have to accept it so this is not really a simplified tax system either so in a sense where the government needed to do first of all if it was going to stay within the conventional norms increase fiscal deficit spend more and cut taxes at the same time right. however there are other ways to look at it and i don't think the government uh, even looking at it from that other way so okay. uh let me just look talk about that quickly before uh, and uh, we run out of time uh you know one can argue that essentially this is not an organic crisis it's not as if the crisis came out of globally it's not as if the crisis came out of uh, the economic system itself it was an external thing yes you could say that a different economic system might have dealt with it differently as we've seen in some countries which are more socialist uh, oriented where inequality is less where it has dealt with it better than places which have high inequality however this given that this was the situation essentially the government should have provided people with basic conditions of existence as long as they have to live inside their homes right all they have to do is ensure that people stay inside their homes right now what you have to do you have to ensure they get food they get medicines maybe they get a certain amount of cash which is required to do Uh, spend on things which you cannot anticipate right but everything else has to, had to be suspended there is no reason why people have to pay rent because if people don't get employed if we can say that oh in a crisis like this it is obvious that people will lose their jobs and they will not get salary then it is equally obvious that returns to capital of any kind whether it is profit interest rent has to be stopped as well so there should have been no rent payment no interest go out and we, there should have been absolutely no reason to ensure that people make profits because as long as the government was able to spend to give you food medicines ensure the, uh, that you have shelter ensure that you have basic amenities right. you just have to deal with this period as everyone is equal right that of course is utopian it's not going to happen we know so uh given that uh, india is essentially an extremely unequal country and inequality is fostered by the system i would say even then the government needs to spend more and cut taxes because otherwise we are not coming out of this morass pretty any time soon right so at the most what we'll see is minor recoveries followed by another slump it becomes a continuous up and down process yeah because we know this government has completely failed when it comes to dealing with uh, the virus itself and right. in terms of daily number of cases we are probably now number 1 uh, across the world and we have no way to know what the deaths are because what is the death registration rate in india in any case right so Absolutely. we don't know how people are dying what is happening whether they're being recognized as covid deaths or just being told to die so right. there's no way to know this thank you anand you so much for talking to us thank you prashant That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with major news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching News Click.